China's winning the race for a coronavirus vaccine. They're taking some pretty big risks. Could it all backfire? Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Last week, China announced that it would join the World Health Organization's Coronavirus Vaccine Initiative. The COVAX Global Initiative is meant to provide COVID-19 vaccines to poor countries. China's government will buy 15 million doses of a future vaccine from COVAX for its own citizens, which will help finance the overall project. Joining COVAX gave China a bunch of good publicity especially because the United States is not joining it. The White House said last month that it would not join COVAX because it did not want to be constrained by multilateral organizations influenced by the corrupt World Health Organization and China. Wow, White House, tell us how you really feel. The Chinese Communist Party covered up the coronavirus, which allowed it to spread around the world, which is why I call it the CCP virus. But since that's happened, the Chinese regime has been trying to turn around all of that negative publicity with a propaganda campaign on how China is leading the battle against the pandemic. And a big part of that effort is China's goal of being the first country to approve and widely distribute a vaccine for the coronavirus. China already produces 700 million vaccine doses a year, vaccines against other diseases. Mostly, these are for China's domestic market. But if China can produce the first successful coronavirus vaccine, that would help Chinese pharmaceutical companies open up the global market. It would give China prestige and credibility in scientific research. And the Chinese Communist Party would have a great way to repair its reputation, maybe even make people forget that the Chinese Communist Party caused the global pandemic in the first place. So the party is willing to take some big risks to make that happen. The problem is, China doesn't have the greatest vaccine safety record. There have been a series of vaccine scandals in China over the last few years, including one from 2018 involving more than 900,000 faulty children's vaccines. Although those vaccines were mostly just ineffective, some children develop disabilities after taking the faulty vaccines. That scandal prompted Chinese officials to pass a much stricter vaccine law in 2019. The country tightened supervision over the vaccine development and distribution process, and increased penalties for fabricating data. But one of the companies that made some of those faulty children's vaccines, Wuhan Institute of Biological Products, is now helping to develop one of the coronavirus vaccines. But some say that there are unlikely to be these kinds of safety issues with the CCP virus vaccine, since the Chinese authorities are watching this issue so closely. And that's true. But in their race to get the first vaccine, Chinese companies are also cutting corners. And some experts are worried. I'll tell you why after the break. Welcome back. Chinese companies are racing to develop a coronavirus vaccine, but in the process, they're also cutting corners. For example, China's coronavirus vaccines are still in phase three trials. Those trials evaluate the safety and effectiveness of the vaccines in humans. But despite the fact that these trials aren't finished, several companies have started injecting people with their vaccines anyway. I mean, what could go wrong? State-run Sinopharm has inoculated 350,000 people while their two vaccines are still in trials. That was through an emergency use program originally restricted to frontline health workers and state employees traveling overseas to high-risk areas. But it seems authorities are looking to expand the number of people receiving the trial vaccines. Health authorities in one Chinese province have asked enterprises and government departments to gather details of employees willing to receive emergency use vaccines ahead of winter. According to bioethics professor Arthur Kaplan, China appeared to be acting irresponsibly by stretching the definition of emergency use. He called China's approach closer to throwing something up against the wall to see what sticks. Look, 
If throwing it against the wall works for spaghetti and post-it notes, why wouldn't it work for something that you inject into your body that could be a matter of life or death? But if you think injecting hundreds of thousands of people with a vaccine before clinical trials are finished is dangerous, that's just the tip of the needle. Because they also injected people with vaccines before clinical trials even started. That's right, Sinopharm's employees, including top executives, received experimental shots even before the government approved testing in people. The company even boasted about it. They said that for more than a hundred years, it is a tradition for employees to test the medicines on themselves. Furthermore, it is a spirit of sacrifice that passed down generation after generation. And that tradition has been carried on by all the generations that survived the testing. You know, maybe this is just one of those cultural differences. Sure, here in the West we have our so-called ethics and our so-called double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trials. And so injecting your employees with an untested vaccine sounds crazy pants. But in China, it's a noble tradition of spirit and sacrifice. And Sinopharm isn't the only company doing it. Another company, Sinovac, has injected 90% of its employees and family members. So here's my question. If your boss asks you whether you want to get injected with your company's vaccine, can you really say no, even if you don't want to do it? Maybe I just don't understand the spirit of sacrifice. But don't worry, because China's National Health Commission official, Zheng Zhongwei, says that the COVID-19 vaccines put into emergency use are safe. They just don't know if they are effective. And that might be the larger issue here. Being the first to get a working coronavirus vaccine could make China a scientific superpower. So the Chinese Communist Party is highly incentivized to approve a vaccine as quickly as possible, even if it's not the most effective. In 2006, the Communist Party set a goal for China to become a science and technology superpower by 2020. But there have been some bumps along the road. For example, there's been a lot of scientific fraud. Back in 2016, China's food and drug regulator carried out a one-year review of clinical trials, concluding that more than 80% of clinical data is fabricated. Some companies were suspected of deliberately hiding or deleting records of adverse effects and tampering with data that did not meet expectations. Oh, so. Chinese pharmaceutical companies were manipulating their data to make their drugs look better. And that was happening 80% of the time. But it's not just individual companies who are to blame. The Chinese Communist Party has completely politicized scientific research, which is a huge problem. Here's an example. Chinese authorities have been pushing the use of traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM, to treat COVID-19. A senior official from the government's TCM administration said more than 90% of all sufferers of COVID-19 had received traditional therapies, and these had been effective 90% of the time. Is that true? Well, she offered no data to support the claim. Not that it would matter, since so much data is apparently fake. Of course, that hasn't stopped Chinese state-run media from constantly talking about how TCM plays a big role in the virus fight. But that's not because TCM is better at treating the CCP virus than Western medicine. It's because promoting TCM is part of the Communist Party's overall political goals. It's a traditional Chinese science that the party can claim ownership of and use to compete with Western medicine. Chinese leader Xi Jinping himself has promoted TCM to the world. So why is this a problem for scientific research? Well, it turns out that published Chinese studies always say that TCM works. This study looked at almost 850 randomized clinical trials on acupuncture published in Chinese journals. 99.8% of the trials reported positive results. That's almost impossible. Now, I'm not saying that TCM doesn't work. But I am saying that because the Chinese Communist Party wants TCM to work 
for political reasons, they've set up a system where no one is allowed to say that TCM doesn't work. That's not a good system for developing a new vaccine for a new disease. I mean, are you going to criticize Xi Jinping's coronavirus response? Didn't think so. Not after a tycoon who denounced Xi Jinping's coronavirus response was sentenced to 18 years in prison. So Chinese companies are cutting corners to get their coronavirus vaccines out faster. And the Chinese Communist Party has politicized science and incentivized researchers to say that their vaccines work whether or not they really do. Why is this happening? I'll tell you after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Why is the Chinese Communist Party pushing so hard to get a coronavirus vaccine? If it were about protecting the health of Chinese citizens, you'd think they wouldn't put their citizens' health at risk by doing things like giving the vaccine to huge numbers of people before it's ready. But of course, it's not really about health and safety. It's about China wanting to use access to the vaccines for diplomacy. The Chinese Communist Party has begun promising early access to countries of strategic interest as it seeks to shore up its global standing. Now this might sound kind of familiar, since it's pretty much the same thing the Communist Party did earlier this year with their face mask diplomacy. They sent medical supplies to hard-hit countries to boost China's image. But that kind of backfired when Beijing demanded praise in exchange for those medical supplies. And when it turned out that China had sent out faulty masks and flawed tests. But surely that won't happen with the coronavirus vaccine. Speaking of quality control, China is using their phase three drug trials to their diplomatic advantage too. These are some of the countries that are running phase three trials of China's vaccines. Many of them are in regions where the Chinese regime is trying to grow its influence, like South America and the Middle East. It's notable that China has not reported any major safety issues with their vaccine trials, especially because two major Western pharmaceutical companies, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson, have both had to pause their phase three vaccine trials because of an unexplained illness in a patient. That is a definite advantage for Chinese companies. In fact, Sinovac has said its vaccines will be ready to go by early 2021. And Sinopharm's vaccine could be ready by the end of 2020. So it looks like China will likely win the race for a coronavirus vaccine. The downside is the Communist Party is taking some pretty big risks to make that happen. And it could potentially backfire. And with that, I think I'll now answer a question from one of you. A fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. William E. Williams asks, Okay, if you became Presentator of America, what Winnie the Pooh character would you be? Okay, William, first of all, I have no interest in being the Presentator of the U.S. I'm running for Supreme Leader of these United States for life. Totally different thing. But I'll forgive you. For now. At least until I become your power-mad Supreme Leader. But that is a good question. People have compared Xi Jinping and Obama to Winnie the Pooh and Tigger, and former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to Eeyore. Even Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam has her 100-acre wood counterpart, Piglet. So who would I be? First of all, I want to say how upset I am by my decision to Google Winnie the Pooh characters, because I saw about a dozen not-safe-for-work versions of Kanga that I cannot unsee. So which character would I be? I'll go with a jaguar. People walk through the forest, forgetting it's even there. But then, when they look up, boom! The jaguar gets the drop on them. Thanks for your question, William. And if you'd like to hear your question or comment read on the show for hundreds of thousands of people to hear, join what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army and support us in the battle against the Chinese Communist Party. You can join for as little as a dollar per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. You'll also get some other cool perks as well. Head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.